good job, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out top 10 John Cena most savage promos by wrestling flashback. Y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to him. I'm already subscribed to him. This should be a good video. I mean, we were just uh checking out John Cena's 20th anniversary in WWE this past Monday night. Uh, on Monday Night Raw, so it, it only makes sense to check out some of his legendary promos. I've said on that video uh, on the 20th anniversary of John Cena being in WWE, I said in that video he's one of the the greater promo guys out there. He can deliver a great promo. He can sell you on a match. He can sell you pretty much on any feud. The dude is fantastic at what he does. It, it comes off natural. It comes off believable when he's talking, you know, and uh, that's the one thing I can always give credit to John. He knows how to control a, uh, control a crowd with his presence, with his voice. So this should be a good one, man. Appreciate all the love and support on the channel, man. Let's get right into this bad boy. One, two, this on? Whether you love him or you hate him, mm -hmm. there is no denying that John Cena can cut one hell of a promo. Your face looks yep. like my nuts. Except you got a hairier bush. <laughs> From his early days as a wannabe Eminem, tying his opponents <laughs> to verbal knots. You need to hit them sit-ups too. You're not exactly the leanest. Forget seeing me, bro. You can't see your own penis. That was a different John back then. Cena has stood out above most others as a truly great talker. Now, while he can oftentimes come across as goofy, especially mm -hmm. during the PG era. Oh, yeah. Holy fudging mustard! Yeah. He's a great talker, but we know he, he's a company guy. He toes the line. He doesn't really curse too much. Not in the, the PG era. John, he didn't really curse too much. You know, he, he towed the company line. But the dude can still deliver a good promo. My life is being ruined by the internet! When he turns it on, there are few that can touch him on the mic. Mm -hmm. He's proved in recent years that he doesn't need to go back to the thugonomics. He doesn't need a silly rap. He just needs to be himself. So here I break down 10 times John Cena spit some truths on the stick and completely own the superstar he was in the ring with. Number 10, Daniel Bryan. During the build-up to their SummerSlam 2013 match, build in a promo on Miz TV, Bryan cut one of his best promos to date. But as good as Bryan was, Cena really made a statement and delivered big time in the promo. Cena listed his hit list, which included the likes of Triple H, The Rock, and Shawn Michaels. But when Brian tells Cena to wait because he's talking about his victims like they're so much better than him, someone from the crowd shouts, they are brutal. <laughs> you talk about all those people like they are so much better than me. They are. <laughs> I want to know. Who that guy was. I always wanted to know. Who was that guy that was like, they are. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> and it was such a serious promo because you could tell the crowd was quiet. And all you hear is, they are. <laughs> Cena laughed at the heckle and went on to state that Brian wasn't on their level. And he didn't belong there yet. Because you don't belong in that. Class. Brian then discussed in Japan that people slapped each other before mm -hmm. a match to fire each other up, but Brian said Cena didn't deserve it. You're not a wrestler. As a result, Cena this slapped the taste out of This is such a good promo. They did a great promo. job in building this feud at the time as the best wrestler in the world against the best entertainer. And the crowd ate it up yep. because it was steeped in reality. Yes, it Number was. Number nine. Dean Ambrose. In the build-up to the triple threat match between Ambrose, Cena, and Styles. This is when SmackDown. Ah, uh, who remembers this SmackDown? This version of SmackDown when AJ Styles was the champ. Who remembers that version of SmackDown? Bring me back. No Take mercy. Me back. Cena and Ambrose had a heated exchange on SmackDown. Cena claimed that he wasn't surprised when Austin called Dean out on his podcast. Stone Cold was right when he called you out on his podcast. That was a good the one, too. The podcast Cena was referring to was where mm -hmm. Austin questioned Ambrose's work ethic, believing he was complacent and asked him to raise his game, which Ambrose claimed to be offended by. Cena went on to tell Ambrose that he hadn't stepped up, and he also told him that he has no balls. Because you ain't stepped up, you fell off. All you've been showing the WWE Universe is that you got no balls, brah. 
This is a I'm good segment. I'm both responding segment. by calling Cena a lazy part-timer that can't keep up anymore. A lazy part-timer. But at that point, the damage had already been done to Ambrose. John Cena doesn't care about Dean Ambrose. Document the shield. Two bona fide WWE superstars. One guy still trying to figure it out. Dean Ambrose. Number Damn. eight, Bray Wyatt. In the build-up to that. This was so good. I just wish at this point I could have cared a little bit more for Bray Wyatt. But it was still entertaining. What they did with no fans. That match was fun, bro. That, that was such a fun match. I go recommend anybody go watch that match if you haven't or whatnot, if you've missed out on it. It's just, it, it's crazy. It's kind of hokey, but it's so much that they did and so much they were saying with this match. It, it was fun, bro. I love this. Their WrestleMania 36 match, Cena talked about how for years he gets blamed for beating other people and somehow ruined their career. Cena said that Wyatt got lazy, gave up and blamed him while adding that Bray's biggest enemy is himself. He recounted his losses and other setbacks and said that he isn't referred to as buried because he accepts responsibility. He went off on way too many WWE superstars, implying Wyatt, who get lazy and blame everyone else. They get lazy and they blame everybody else but themselves. He went on to label Wyatt as the most overhyped, overvalued, and overprivileged superstar in WWE history. The most overhyped, overvalued, overprivileged WWE superstar in existence. As well as being someone who doesn't deserve an opportunity more than certain NXT stars. Why on earth do we continue to give fifth and sixth chances to people? All they Ooh. do is say, what about me and not how can I help you? He also had a backstage interview this which was subsequently deleted segment. by WWE where he said, I also know that the fiend is Bray Wyatt is Husky Harris is a guy in a mask. I'm <laughs> sick of hearing a certain group of WWE superstars walk around and say, I deserve this or I deserve that. Cena didn't hold back with Wyatt in this feud. Yeah. It's a good thing Wyatt eventually ended up the victor. Not yeah. that they've done too much with him since then, mind you. Mm -hmm. Number seven, Randy Orton. During their feud in 2013 for the undisputed world title belts, Cena went off on Orton on an episode of Raw, dissecting this was a good him personally too. and professionally. A guy like you has been given every single thing in the WWE. He said that when Orton actually got into the WWE, he was sheltered by the best in the business. All he does is hide behind Triple H and Stephanie. He said that Orton has always blamed others and pointed fingers, referring to his real life behavior problems mm -hmm. inside and outside the ring. And you got the balls to stand in this ring and say you're better than anybody here? It is crazy because Daniel Bryan got the most love in this segment, bro. Daniel Bryan got the most love in this entire segment. <laughs> Cena's promo was excellent. He set up the match perfectly as Orton needing to prove himself despite everything he's already accomplished. If you hold on to this, you can finally say, hey guys, look, I'm finally what I was supposed to be 10 years ago. Good Number segment. Six, Dolph Ziggler. Oh, After this AJ one. Lee turned on John at TLC 2012 in favor of Dolph, Cena had some choice words for Ziggler on Raw during their New Year's celebration. Cena was great on the mic, breaking through the fourth wall, making yeah. references to how Ziggler has yet to break through WWE's proverbial glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. He mentioned that Dolph has been in the WWE for seven years and he's not stopped complaining. I ain't gonna lie to you. John Cena, he fucking eviscerated Dolph on I was like, damn. He eviscerated him on this promo. ...to management about Ooh. his lack of a push. This is not your first year here, Dolph. It is your seventh. Cena then gives a quick rundown of Ziggler's career thus far. Yep. The Dolph Ziggler story goes like this. First, you were a caddy. Then you were a cheerleader. Then you had blonde hair. Then you had brown hair. Now you have blonde hair. Then you had a large girlfriend. Now you got a small girlfriend. <laughs> now you got a large man. And you walk around with a suitcase that has a contract and a bunch of Valtrex. Cena didn't mince his- <laughs> Bro, <laughs> he, he sent Dolph Ziggler to the gulags. I mean, he sent him straight to the gulags, bro. Jeez. Words when he made it clear to Dolph that he needs to look deep in the mirror to find out what kind of man he is. Only way a guy like you gets a set of nuts is by buying him at the concession stand. Cena finished the promo off by giving a mock toast to Dolph and AJ and praises them for what they're full of. Oh, no. oh, my God. Full of you Number know five, what? AJ Styles. This was John a good Cena one too. Off with AJ Styles is something that nobody ever expected to see. 
but when it happened, the two men created magic. In the ring, their matches were incredible, but they also had many amazing promos to build it up. Mm -hmm. In perhaps their greatest promo on SmackDown, Cena trashed the independent scene. And called me a sorry excuse for a wrestler. Why? Because I didn't put time in on the indie scene? claiming he wasn't built for it, and then he proceeded to break the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. He spoke openly about the fact that if he beat AJ, he would have buried him, and that's all anyone would say. You're gonna try as hard as you can to make it here, and if you ever fail, oh no, it ain't your fault. It's my fault, right? Because mm -hmm. I buried you. Cena yep. credits his styles for being hot for like six months, while Cena claimed that he had held this place down for a decade. Cena said that regardless how good Styles thinks he is, he isn't at Cena's level or the level below him. Cena said AJ is just a guy holding on to that championship because he let him, and that Styles is just like everyone else, hating on him but trying his best to be him. Mr. Face that runs the place? Cena delivered an excellent promo here, and although Styles made a lot of great points, mm -hmm. Cena fired back and put him in his place. Number four, CM Punk. Cena now their rivalry, their back and forths were so great. When CM Punk was a face, it was fantastic. When CM Punk was a heel, it was fantastic. Them? Ah. Oh, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. I would love to see them have one more match. Just them two. I would love to see them have one more match, bro. And I'll be good. They don't have to do anything else. I know the promos alone would be fantastic. Cena and Punk's feud was amazing, but it was in a promo before Night of Champions 2012 that Cena really let Punk have it. Cena said that Punk had held the belt for 300 days, and for 300 days, the belt had been irrelevant. For 300 days, you have been WWE champion. For 300 days, that championship has been irrelevant. He didn't even main event a pay-per-view in nine months. Woo! The night you made the most noise was ironically the night your microphone was turned silent. Cena says that Punk promised change, but it wasn't anything that, that he said. That was really bad booking, to be honest with you, but he yeah. wanted at the time. The only change was that Punk became a star. He also claimed that Punk has no idea who he is because Punk steals colors from Hall of Famers yeah, this and stole the one. elbow from the late Randy Savage. Cena finished off by pandering to the crowd yeah. and saying he was going to kick Punk's ass at Night of Champions in French, which resulted in a massive pop from the Montreal crowd. Je vais être bon de cul, which means I'm just going to kick your ass. This was such, such Number a good three, promo, say. The Rock. The Rock and John this was Cena good had too. an epic Fantastic feud that spanned over two years, where to a lot of fans' surprise, it was actually John Cena who seemed to come out the best during these exchanges. Many people credit this to Cena's return to Thugonomics, where he spit some home truths on The Rock. You imitate me every time you leave. For seven years, we couldn't see you. I love that but back and forth. it was never more clear during a two-minute promo back in February 2012. John Cena stole the show in the closing segment. It was all about The Rock, and then Cena spun it around. Cena did more with his two minutes than The Rock had done in the 20 minutes before. I didn't come out here to swing for the people's strudel or whatever you call on your penis nowadays. <laughs> Cena said that he is the guy that talks Rock down because Rock's not there. However, Rock is only half right because Cena will run Rock down when he is there too. Cena also mentioned that he used to love Rock until he met Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson? is a self-centered, egotistical, see-through son of a bitch. He then mentioned that he doesn't need words trending on Twitter or his promo printed on his wrist. Just like Ooh. I don't need my notes for my promo on my wrist. Yeah, that was a that was a real jab because The Rock had his promo on his wrist. So that was like a like an inside jab that he kind of threw there. Like, I, I love that. I love when the promos, they get a little bit real, get a little gritty, maybe throw your, you know, your opponent off like oh shit i wasn't expecting you to say that maybe or maybe they planned on saying that who planned on him saying that either way it was still a nice touch to the promo it wasn't something anybody expected to see as cena crossed the huge line yeah and pointed out a major flaw with what the rock had been doing burying him in front of the fans yeah the crowd even began to cheer cena when he dropped the mic after telling rock to keep trending continue trending yeah that i part of me wants to believe i don't think the they went over saying he was going to do that. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You write your promo on your wrist because you, you don't have it like you used to. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that was more of an audible by John Cena. I'm sure they probably had some words backstage. Number two, 
The Miz. Now, The Miz and Cena have feuded a number of times, mm -hmm. but their rivalry in 2017 became truly personal and led They're to both great John Cena's microphone. greatest mic work. During this time, their in-ring promo segments began to blur the lines between kayfabe and reality, with a 16-time champ laying down some harsh truths to The Miz and his wife. In the first of the two savage promos on Miz TV in Feb 2017, Miz chewed out Cena live on air. He called him out, labeling him a hypocrite. Cena ranted about how The Rock was a part-timer going off to Hollywood, and now Cena is mm -hmm. treading the same path. Cena then responded by calling Miz a dude named Mike who shortened his last name to be like The Rock. You're a dude named Mike who shortened his last name on the real world, tried to bootleg The Rock's electricity to get put on the WWE. <laughs> when you got here, you straight up stole Chris Jericho's personality. You stole Ric Flair's figure four leg lock. You stole Daniel Bryan's offense and his personality. <laughs> You're a dude dressed up as a dude playing another dude. The greatness of this promo was that they took personal shots, mm -hmm. like how Cena talked about how Miz doesn't really have his own identity. Next time we talk, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. This, is this so was good. then followed up a month later so with an good. even better promo from Cena, yep. where he took shots at the Mrs. movies, claiming nobody had seen them and they were just bootleg versions of films that he had already made, yep. crashing his acting career. Cena then turned to Maurice and pointed out that the WWE didn't want her back. They didn't ask you back because they didn't want you back. Because when you were here before, you didn't do jack. Cena called Maurice a waste of space and told her that she's only back because Miz begged WWE so he can be on Total Divas. He's using you to be on Total Divas. He also made fun of the Miz and Maurice for not having kids, joking. What, you firing blanks there, sport? Yeah, that was, Cena. that was cold, bro. John Cena was fucking embarrassing this nigga, bro. If I'm the Miz, hey, we got to square up for real, bro. You, you really be in disrespect. Even dropped a few non-PG words, providing the fire that the build-up to this match needed by saying, you're not the it couple. You're the shh it couple. That was one of the best promos from Cena because uh, it was a mix of making things very... I get I get it. I, I wish they could have just let him say the S word uh, and just bleep it out. I wish they would have. It would have been better if he wouldn't have been able Very to do personal, that. doing some comedy in there and just ripping on a dude for being inferior to him. And the crowd was loving every the bit The crowd was it. loving Definitely this for sure. Definitely worth a watch. Number one, of Roman course. Reigns. In the lead up to their match at No Mercy 2017, Cena legit... Apparently all this was a work. Come to find out all this was planned for them to, you know, have this promo set up the way it was. But still part of me wants to believe that Roman really, really kind of forgot his lines. Part of me. Part murdered of me. Roman Reigns on the mic. During their contract signing, Cena made his thoughts on Reigns very clear. Claiming that all he sees in him is a bootleg version of himself. A cheap ass, corporately yep. created. John Legendary Cena promo bootleg. segment. Cena continued by saying this jump right here. He ain't the guy. Dude, you're just a guy. Hey trying so desperately to fill shoes that you never will. He made it fit, but also made it very clear to anyone who knows anything about wrestling what was going on. WWE had been trying to make Reigns for years and it wasn't working it like was it not working. Reigns set about explaining to Cena why the fans booed him after so many years of hustle, loyalty, and respect. But then he forgot his lines. Cena decided Apparently. to be cruel cool to be kind. It's called a promo, Shut kid. Your and mouth, if you want to be the big dog, you're going to have to learn how to do it. So go ahead. Eventually, Reigns did get out what he wanted to say. That's when Cena really turned it on. Congratulations. It took you five years to cut a halfway decent promo, but now I'm about to shrink you down to size. He called Reigns a damn fool and referred to an old saying that it's better to keep your mouth shut and have people think you're stupid than to open it and prove them yeah, right. Yeah, he did bury him, bro. Savage. <laughs> he also, buried him on I'm his still promo. here because you can't do your job line was so cutting on so many levels. He then finished it off with the line, you should be ashamed I'm a part-timer. Because I can do this part-time. Yeah, part-time, better. Better than you could ever do it full-time. Cena verbally undressed Reigns in an almost unprecedented fashion. The whole promo battle was a lesson for Reigns. It was an exercise with one of the best to ever do it on the microphone. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed- oh, This was dope, man. This was definitely dope to go down memory lane. Uh, I will say this, Roman is, he's much better now. Roman is in his bag when it comes to promos. He's more confident. He, he seems more genuine. It's crazy what a few years can do. Roman can hold his own in a promo, and I love it. But um, 
Yeah, this was great, man. This is great just to see John Cena in his bag, in his element with some of these different wrestlers, man. It just brings back nostalgia memories. But comment down below. Let me know. I want to know, what's your favorite John Cena promo of all time? For me, it's still going to be the Roman Reigns one. The reason why, because I don't know. I think I may have. I don't, I don't know if I watched that live. I don't think I watched it live, but I think I saw it on YouTube. And I was like, oh, shit, I got to see this match. Like, I, it was just, I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting it. It just came off so real, so believable. This was one of the few times people were cheering for John Cena in unison because we hated Roman Reigns' character so much. I want you to understand John Cena was getting a pop reaction because we did, we hated Roman. It was anybody but Roman. And he said a lot of truths there. And I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was a great way to hype up their match. It was fantastic. And even John Cena couldn't get Roman over. Couldn't even get him over. It wasn't until he turned heel, that's when he was able to get over. So... But that was my favorite John Cena back and forth promo. But let me know down below your favorite as well. Appreciate all love support. Road 2. 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.